The Man with the Twisted Lip Sherlock Holmes Mr. Isa Whitney was and had been for many years an opium addict. Mrs. Whitney is very worried about her husband because he hasn't been home for two days and late in the night she goes to the Dr. John's house. He is probably at a place called the Bar of Golden in East London, down by the river. It's in Upper Swandam Street. It's a place where opium addicts go. The doctor John Watson goes to the looking for the addict man and when he finds him, Isa Whitney began to cry. Sherlock Holmes is in the bar too. Watson recognizes him immediately. Isa Whitney goes home in the garage. Watson and Holmes walk out of the bar together. Holmes came to find an enemy. He fears that Mr. Neville St. Clair entered the bar of gold and that he will never come out of the place alive. Holmes asked Watson if he wants to come with him to resolve the case and he accepted immediately. Next day, they try to resolve the mystery. Holmes tells Watson what happened with the missing man. Neville St. Clair came to live nearly five years ago. He took a large house and lived like a rich man. Two years ago, he married the daughter of a local farmer by whom he now has two children. Neville Sinclair was a businessman in London. There is no reason, therefore, to think that he has any money troubles. One day, the Mrs. Sinclair walked by the Upper Swandon Street and suddenly she heard a cry and saw her husband looking down at her front a window on first floor of one of the houses. He seemed to be waving to her, as he, he wanted her to come up. He looked very worried and nervous. Then, very suddenly, somebody seemed to pull him back from the window. Mrs. St. Clair felt sure that something was seriously wrong. She saw that the entrance to the house was below ground level. This was the door of the bark of gold. She rushed down the steps and through the front room and tried to go up the stairs which led to the upper part of the house. But the owner, an Indian sailor, ran downstairs and pushed her back. The Malign servant helped him to push her out into the street. She rushed along Upper Swantham Street and into Fresno Street, where she found several policemen. The rooms were not examined very carefully, and the police found signs of a terrible crime. Mr. St. Clair, alive or dead, was certainly not there. He seems to have gone out of the window. There was no other possibility. Hugo Bone, the beggar, was the last person to see Neville St. Clair. He pretends to be a match seller, but there is always a dirty letter hat by his side in which people throw coins. He has a pale face, long red hair, and bright brown eyes. His upper lip is twisted up as a result of an old accident. He refused to admit that he had ever seen Mr. St. Clair, and swore that the clothes on the floor was as such a mystery for him as it was for the police. If Mrs. St. Clair she had seen her husband at the window, she must be dreaming or she must have been crazy. Boone was taken to the police station, still complaining loudly. 
When the water level in the river had gone down, the police looked for the body of Mr. St. Clair in the mud, but they only found his coat. Probably the body itself had been swept away. Perhaps Bone pushed St. Clair through the window and then decided to get rid of the cloth, which me, my gave clues of the police. Bone has been a professional vicar for many years, but he has never been in any serious trouble with the police. He seems to live very quietly and harmlessly. Watson and Holmes go to the Whitney house. The Mrs. Whitney shall give them a letter from his husband. This is what the letter said. There is, do not be frightened. All will come well. There is a huge error which it may take some little time to rectify. Wait patiently, Neville. This, say Holmes, is a written on pencil on a page torn from some book and posted by a man with a dirty thumb. You have no doubt this is your husband's hand, madame. Holmes asked to Mrs. St. Clair several things about the last Monday and the moment when she saw him at the bar's window. Holmes asked, Had he ever shown any signs of having taken opium? Never, she replied. Thank you, Mrs. St. Clair. Those are the principal points about which I wishes to be absolutely clear. We shall now have a little supper and then retire, for we have a very busy day tomorrow. But Holmes did not go to bed that night. He was a man who sometimes stayed away for a week when he was working on one of his cases. Holmes was still smoking when Watson woke up next morning. Charlotte asked him to Watson, are you awake? Yes, he responded and invite him to an early morning drive. So, Sherlock and Watson went to the early morning drive. It was 25 past 4. Holmes began to say to Watson that he had found the explanation of Neville St. Clair's disappearance. Sherlock said, I have the key to the mystery. It is in the bathroom. Let us see whether this key is the right one. It was a sunshine morning and the city was too quiet. The carriage stopped at the Box Street Police Station and Sherlock Holmes asked for the officer in duty. Then he went to the office. Holmes asked for the man who had been charged with involvement in the disappearance of Mr. Neville St. Clair. And the policeman said that he was a dirty man, that his face was as black as a coal miner's, that he seemed to confirm Sherlock's suspicion. Holmes said that he liked to see him. The officer carried him to the vigar, and when they arrived there, the prisoner was asleep. The prisoner had twisted his upper lip, and he was extremely dirty. Holmes took a wet cloth from a bag, and Bradstreet opened the cell door quietly. Holmes then pounced on the prisoner, and he rubbed his face. He showed and stated that it was Mr. Neville. After that, it was discovered the true identity of the bigar, and he said that they were violating the law because he was not a murderer. He was the person they were looking. Holmes said that no crime has been done. Then Mr. Neville St. Clair began to tell him story about his life. He told them that he was an actor and later he became a reporter. One day he dressed up like a bigar and borrowed money for a write an article for a newspaper. Later he saw that he can get a lot of money being bigar since that he is a professional bigar. Therefore, in begging, Mr. St. Clair made in one day as much money as he will earn in one month as a reporter. Only one man knows his secret, the owner of the bar of gold, which led him to use the room to dress up as a beggar. With the money he was able to marry and buy a house, but that Monday he was dressing up when he saw his wife on the street.
To cover his beggar personality, he ran down and ordered the owner of the place to prevent she to come up. He put on him the wake up and the fake hair, but he needed to hide the clothes. Because of that, he thrown his clothes off the window to the river. After that, he was discovered, he promised to the police not to beggar anymore in order to hide the story to his wife.